Hello everybody, thanks for joining us. Hope you're all okay, hope you can all hear us. Um, because I'm trying to avoid the usual technical mishaps. Anyway, we will deal with that as and when, or hopefully not. But anyway, thanks for joining us guys for your for another dose of law. And as if like, I was thinking about this because there's obviously calls coming out all the time. It's like, when do you get to a point where you've had enough? You know, he's like, fucking hell. Uh, you know, as, as, as entertaining as it, is, as it is, do you guys... Oh, and I'm joined by my usual... Well, you know who's here anyway. But um, Do any of you guys suffer from lawn fatigue? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had it recently, and then Blue Boy dragged me back. So there's that. I mean, it just became like a, just one big circle over and over. Nothing new was coming out. But this report is casts a whole new light on it for me. He's still uh, funny, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, just before we get into that, I should have mentioned this first. Our good friend Amanda James has not been very well, and she's breaking through the pain barrier of covid to join us today so please send her your best wishes and thoughts so that she gets better soon so she can get back to doing her house chores whilst listening to numerous lawn calls um Thank so you. we we send her our best wishes um amanda james do you suffer from lawn fatigue yeah sometimes it gets kind of boring um like shin said when there's not a lot of new stuff coming out um and I've listened to all the Ramona calls and the Winnie calls 5,000 times a day. <laughs> I guess it gets kind of boring. I put it's, it's just background noise for me most of the time, which is really weird. Um, it, it's like white noise. It's like a fan going, but it's just Lauren screaming and crying. <laughs> a lot of the calls I can recite along with the calls. Cause I've listened to them so many times. I don't know what that says about me, but it's the truth. Yeah, well, I think uh, I think we all have to do some introspection every now and again because I was, you know, I do that a lot with this stuff and um, listening to the new calls and and um, trying to figure out why I find them entertaining. I think it's because because it's like. Um, because he's been strung along and he doesn't quite get it, you're kind of on edge all the time. You're listening to it and you're wondering if he's going to figure it out. And because it's not real, it adds this kind of unknown quantity to it. And I think maybe because you can't understand how he believes it, it makes it so intriguing, I think. I think that's the most... And also, I think there's the element of what information is he, is he going to give us? And then you start thinking, why do I care? <laughs> do you know what I mean? But it's it's you intriguing. Also think you, you also think there's a limit to what information he can give you. He's got so much limited experience in his life that he's now, you know, taught telling us about how he used to hide in the woods with his brothers and pretend they had a butcher shop with rotten meat. I, I didn't, uh, rotten wood rather. I, I didn't understand why that was so noteworthy in his <laughs> mind, but he doesn't have much to share. Um, but to me, it's like, you know, when, you know, the uh, the office came out and you just binge watch the shit out of it, right? And it's, at some point, you just got to walk away from it. But I go back to it now and I love it. And like, I go back to the Ramona calls. I go back to the Winnie calls, you know, the ones that are select, especially the Rage ones. Um, and, you know, I still laugh. So... Yeah, me too. I've I have listened to the Rod call, the Rage Point. Somebody time stamped the Rage, um, yeah. And I have to kind of do even more introspection with this because when all the Ramona stuff started going along, and I wasn't really enjoying it, and obviously there was all that beef with Ember and all that stuff. Um, but with this, I enjoy. I listen to it all. There's no like. There's no point in it where I'm like, oh, I don't like where this is going. It's because it, it's kind of like being spelled out for him. When Blue Boy's doing the calls, he's 
kind of being given every piece of information that you could possibly give him without saying, listen, Lorne, um, you're being recorded. It's like... I, and I think well, in that case, can I, can I send you more confidential documents? You know, it's like... <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. It's, 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 it's... Let me double down on that. And he has everyone in his life telling him, everyone in his real life telling him, don't talk to these people. They're not real. Anybody that contacts you is not real, Lauren. They're recording you. They're fucking with you. Stop it. His probation officer, his therapist, even Roy. Do you guys heard that voicemail where oh, Roy's yes. like, you're so fucking stupid. Murderous I Roy. I was t- shocked when I heard that. Yeah, he's going to shoot him. He's going to shoot him and strangle them. But everyone tells them, these, you can't trust these people. Don't send them your documents. Don't talk to them. And instead of listening to them, Lauren just fights. He fights against them every time. Well, this one's real. I know it. I met Casey face to face. There sounds exactly like her. There's no way she's not real. And what's interesting as well, it's like another level of lawnography. So at the beginning, the first part of lawnography was like, does he know about us? Is he seething with rage because these people are taking the piss out of him online? Then there was the interviews. Then there was the catfishing. Then there was another level of catfishing. And he never got it. He never got it. But now... It's like he's got this level of awareness, lawn level of awareness, which is like a fucking worm. But um, this kind of, no, not he doesn't know it, he doesn't quite get it, but, but he knows that kind of Ember's been fucking with him, he knows that he's been recorded, he now gets that um, the, um, uh, all the, Ram- uh, not Ramona, what, Winnie stuff was nonsense and Jamie Amy was not real, but... He thinks Jamie Amy was real in the beginning. So it's kind of like he gets it but still doesn't. So you, you kind of think well, and you listen to it and you think, oh, he's got it now. And then you're like, oh, no, he hasn't. He still thinks Xavier's there and pulling all the strings. I know, and I know. That's just and, and fucking he hilarious. Jamie, he thinks Jamie Amy was real in the beginning because it was a female voice. So there's somebody behind that. You know, there's a female behind that. And he knows it's wine lover, I guess. But... You know, the other thing that fascinates about me about him is I, I don't know how this man is still standing. What do you, you mean, know, mean by still standing? Like, he's I, not... I, I, just, I, uh, I don't know. I mean, existing. I mean, how he's not. <laughs> well, what, what do you I mean? mean? Like, just Brian, disappeared? <laughs> because because yeah, he's been catfished so many times, he just disappears into oh, thin He's gone. Mess and get to, get, to, get to involuntary place in a, in a facility somewhere, but. Pride is pride is the only thing stitching that mess together. He's got so much pride. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, though, you know, it's it's kind of funny. it's it'd be interesting to know what would happen if that disappeared. If if for whatever reason it just evaporated from him, you know, what mm-hmm. where would we where would his head be? Where would the lawn without this arrogant pride, if that's a correct terminology? Where would he be? You know, how would how would someone react? A normal human being react to knowing that they've been fucked with for five, six years, whatever it is. Like his whole life has been just a pantomime for the online for YouTube. Like, how would someone react to that? I mean, this is. I suppose this is kind of the thing that I always have to kind of question myself for enjoying it. You know, because I, I can't separate myself from people that are doing it now because I enjoy it. It would be ridiculous for me to go, oh, it's fucking wrong. But I do have to question it in my mind. I'm going, what would happen if he, if he, um, you know, had a, a full realisation? Would he shoot himself? I don't think people care. I think that's the gist of it, really. But, you know, you put yourself in that position and you'd be like, I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what that would be like, but... You know, I suppose maybe I'm putting normal logic into him, which he can't do. Maybe that's the error. Well, we all have a purpose. We all want to have a purpose. You know, we want to have a, you know, some some reason for for being. You know, uh, maybe have some destiny, have some goal in mind or whatever. I mean, he just lives minute by minute. He can't he can't see past his nose. You know, I mean. If I were him, I I would be like, 
producing these these jackass movies where we you have really dangerous stunts and shit. <laughs> it's just like really offer offer myself up for entertainment for everybody at this point. But well, it is an interesting question. Um and we've got an expert with us in this category, uh, Miss Lockhart, of course. Um, where does this, where do the blue boy calls sort of rank with regard to the catfishing? Do we think? What do you mean? So I don't suppose you can. So in other words, you you know, I'm not you, your calls with blue boy. Uh, Tiffany it, it generally seem to be the most popular because you kind of put him in his place. I don't suppose you can compare really because they're all different. Because the Ramona was in, was intriguing. We're not even talking about the subject matter here, are we? But I'll continue. The Ramona calls were seen as intriguing because it was kind of the first time that it'd been catfished. The Winnie calls were seen as great because of how ridiculous it was. And then the Tiffany calls were kind of seen as great because. He was being put in his place. Everything was being spelled out to him. You thought he turned the corner, and then he's like, "I couldn't say fucking no." Uh, and then you've got what also, came after also that. She extracted information. Uh, Tiffany extracted a lot of information. It, well, wow. exactly, and gave us loads of stuff. Then you had the, like the robot calls, which you you don't need. I don't need to elaborate on why that's great. And then you've got this, which is another version of Casey, and we're extracting even more information out of him. So it's kind of like. I don't suppose you can compare them, really. I don't suppose any one's greater than the other. They're all... I can actually listen to the Winnie Calls now without actually cringing for some reason. Maybe it's maybe I've got over the bitterness. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I think, I think that all the calls are different. So I certainly enjoy the, the, the new Casey stuff. I think what's fascinating about those is that Casey, from the stuff that we've heard so far, is could not be any less interested in being on the phone. I don't know what that would feel like to have somebody on the on the other line who is completely disinterested, doesn't care what you have to say, <laughs> is just very monotone, flat. There's no real care involved, not even as a friendship. So it's really bizarre that he looks forward to these phone calls, even when it came to the robot. And the robot was, of course, hilarious. Um, but of course, with a robot, you can't even have any type of emotion. It's going to be flat no matter what. And of course, it's like what we were talking about um, earlier, that you know, it would be funny um, to hear him say, well, you don't sound very excited about that when the robot would be talking, because, of course, the robot can't be excited about anything. But with Casey being a real voice and to not have the, and to have basically the same level of enthusiasm, almost like it's just an annoyance to talk to him. And yet he still sits there and, yeah. he, and he takes it. So all of the the catfish I think that the different ways of speaking to him, you know, have have a lot of similarities, but they have differences too. Um, you know, that you can probably point a theme on each one after we've heard all the the Casey stuff and the Thropple stuff, which I'm really really excited for. Um, but I think you can come up with with kind of themes in between all of them, and it is it is really interesting. Um, but to also talk about what you were saying earlier about his pride, I don't think he has as much pride as he does a stance that he's a victim. Because when he's talking to Casey and she's again stating everything, like Winnie's not real, Rhoda's not real, you know, Will, I love how it's pointed out every time he wants to talk about Jamie. Um, that he's actually talking about Will every single time that gets thrown into his face. Well, you fell in love with Will. <laughs> love that. Yeah. Um, but when all of this stuff about the catfishing and everything that's happened oh, since he's been released, really, he looks at it as if it's, it's everybody else's fault that it's all happening. And I've always had the stance, you know, especially when, when a catfishing chapter ends, there's always the question, well, is it going to happen again? Is somebody else going to get involved? And the real answer to that is it'll stop when Lauren stops. He's the one who has to put a stop to it. So 
when it's being brought up, up to him again, not all, everything's fake. He's like, Oh, what the fuck? That's fucked up. These fucking people. And then he talks about how Ashley let him on the computer. And then he was finally able to see he was away from his computer for five years. So how could he know what everyone was up to? And the thing is, is that everyone's been telling him multiple parties, his people that are face to face with him, the catfish themselves have, <laughs> have told him, <laughs> um, letter writers have told him, everybody has told him the judge, his probation, his, his class even. So his, I think his victim mentality is the thing that keeps him going much more than his pride. But don't the two go hand in hand though? In a way. Certainly they, well, sure. I mean, in a, in a way, but I don't, I mean, as far as Lauren is concerned, you know, of course we can't see anything that he does as being good. So when somebody has pride, you would think that they're proud of themselves and I don't but, know. Oh, 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 false pride then. Okay. There was a, there's a section in the book that me and you have both read, haven't we? Not simultaneously, obviously the, uh, letting go book. I can't remember the name of the author. Um, Oh, doctor, never mind. Anyway, there's a section in it about pride. And before I read it, I was always like, pride is a good thing. You know, you're proud of yourself. It's kind of like oh. confidence. But it's seen as being quite a negative egotistical trait where it's like, I'm kind of special, you know, and I deserve this. And, you know, my achievements yeah. are A, B, and C. And so I think there is a, the, there's certainly an element of that there. But obviously, I know what you're saying about, about his victim mentality. I mean, that that is the cornerstone of lo of lawnography isn't it? it without a shadow of a doubt that's where all this comes from if, if you didn't have this in fact what was i listening to i'll tell you what it was something flashed up on my phone like recommendations of course it's either star wars or lawn or fucking no gallagher and um occasionally the office but so um one of the ramona calls popped up and it was the, it it was after she declared that she was declared. <laughs> it was after that she said, you know, it's fake and all that. And he spoke to her again. And she asked him a question and said, "Do because he's talking about the sting and he's saying that they, um, not everybody deserves, oh, he was saying that the um, predators, they needed to do it because some of those people needed to be caught. And you were like, I know where this is fucking going. So she asked him a great question, which was, should you have been caught? And he said, no, because I was vulnerable at the time. And I was like, mm -hmm. you just fucking roll your eyes when you hear it, don't you? Just like, <laughs> no matter how many times you've heard it, no matter what you've read, what you've seen, how many different times he's explained the same thing, you just go, oh, my word. It, it's remarkable. It's like, yeah, I went after that kid, but I was vulnerable, so I should have been let off. So I'm going to fucking... Yeah, he'll say the same thing today. He would yeah. say the same thing today. And what I think is, is interesting, I forget what he, they said his counselor's name is, Julie, right? Oh, yep. Yeah, that she's really nailing it on the head. She's understanding things from, from his past and everything. And that's what I think is really aggravating is because Lauren's just looking for someone to hear him out and to go along with what he's saying, to feel sorry for him and to tell him, wow, Lauren, that must have been really hard for you, huh? That's what he wants. He wants, he he wants a hug box. You think he cries? Oh, give him excuses 100%. for his behavior. Oh, yes, it does. And yes, Shin, he Is cries he like he a baby. A no, I don't, I don't think she hugs him. But I, I do absolutely know that he cries without being there. I think we all know that. Well, I think I think pride is a big thing. Self image is his big thing. I, I mean, that's the like I said, that's the only thing I can see propping him up. And I think when it comes to the victim card, he plays that when he runs into obstacles not to be proud about, like the sting. I was vulnerable. You know, he'll play the victim card in that situation. You know. Um, you know, and, and, and to a certain extent, he could develop pride out of that. Look, I, I persevered through that. I, I thrive now. Look at me now. I own my own land. You know, it, it, you know the victim card just is the, uh, is the trump card to deal with all the other bullshit cards that people keep throwing out. What's funny so, about 
he's saying he was vulnerable at the time is he just literally ran away because he'd scammed an old couple. <laughs> but he's the victim. He's the one who's vulnerable. It's like, I got a minute. <laughs> well, even then. Well, yeah, got... he. Yeah, Tim, you're going to say the same thing or not? Well, I don't know, but I just was remembering when Betty was talking about the voicemail that he left her <laughs> about not even having a can of peas or something like that. He's crying to her. That's insane oh that he's actually crying to her and wanting her to tell him it's going to be okay. Yeah, everything everything is so sad, you know. Uh, speaking of, his grandma died when he was in the Air Force. Did you did you guys hear that again? This is off subject, but do you hear that um, that song that he uh, sang recently? Uh, I, I think it may have been on the robot call. Something about his grandma dying, and then um, there are holes in the floor of heaven where she she is crying down on them, and only because she wishes she was with them again. And it's like really fucked up idea of death, you know? Like people don't want to be there, you know? It's kind of weird. But all of his songs have this other, I'm going way off topic now, I'm sorry. You know, I got drunk, I abused you, I'm a fool, I want you, I want you back. You know, those are all the songs that he picks. <laughs> right, or the one where he's talking about how um, we don't get along. That's how the, the song opens, we don't get along all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's yeah, but... just um, reminded us in the chat of what Judge Woodcock said. Um, John in the chat, I can't pronounce your second name, dude, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um didn't Judge Woodcock say something about him being the victim of his own crimes? I believe he said, you are yeah. not the victim of your own crimes, Mr. Armstrong. Sure. Yeah, Which, yeah. Right. I remember listening to that and thinking, that's the best summing up of his victim mentality I've ever heard. It was so short and precise. Because that's yeah. exactly what he's become, or tried to become, is the victim of his own crimes. Which is just incredible, even given the nature of his crimes. It's like, if you were stealing a lot, the old adage of stealing a loaf of bread to, uh, for your starving family you know you could that's where you would think you could argue about being the victim of your own crime to a certain extent but this is just so far away from that it's almost as far away from that as you could possibly get which is um you know how the judge kept it together because he was so i mean i know it's their job to be like professional it's like when judge Durrow was dealing with the brooks case he was like so professional and, and you know dealing with him and treated lawn with probably a respect he didn't deserve in a way um to be honest yeah, well, but, you know, but that's he's... the way that the justice system should work and i do believe that everybody should be treated like that you know given the opportunity to become better and say and stand up and take ownership yeah we actually almost stood up and cheered when he said that <laughs> but, um... i thought you brought brought any tears in from what i remember <laughs> Well, here's the thing, though. You know, Judge Woodcock was prepared for that case. He read everything. You got to remember, there was originally like seven or nine counts. I can't remember what it was, and a lot of them had to do with the, you know, secreting a phone, sending nudes, things like that. But they whittled those down to just the just the alcohol charge. But you know, he was really apprised of who Lauren was and what he was doing. And I, it makes me wonder whether he actually checked out the uh, any of the streams or whatnot. But it's probably in the uh, chat now, to be uh, honest. But yeah, but can you imagine this new report getting in his hands now? Now he's dealing with not just a drunk guy, but a guy who's psychologically evaluated as a child predator, as a, as a pedophile. He might well, he look had at a, He had another report prior to this that yeah. we haven't seen. Yeah, we haven't a lot of I mean, and chances are Lauren hasn't seen it either. Probably the only reason why he got he got this one is because he paid for it. Could be, and he didn't even read this one. No. Oh, that's, yeah, well, let's get on to the, this report, okay. shall we? Because we've been um, ruminating for a while. So let's um, crack on. I've got You've got page one up there at the minute, I believe. So um, uh, with just a bit of a recap as to where we were kind of up to. And this is this kind of self-assessment part that he kind of read himself and thought, oh, this clears me. I'm going to send it to Casey. Um, that was a, um, which is kind of funny. So we need to kind of remind anybody that didn't listen last time, in case you forgot, as I understand it, I'm pretty sure this is true, Lorne paid 
two and a half thousand for this report because he thought it would make him get, look better in the eyes of. Yeah. But he didn't pay for it because he got a loan to pay for it, and now we've got our hands on it, which is fucking crazy. It just gives you that extra element of humour when it comes to this. Um, so that's always worth mentioning. So. If we just go to the bottom paragraph, Mr. Armstrong blames his lack of what's that say? Lack of in person relationships on his relationship with Paula. <laughs> it's always somebody else's fault. Isn't it? <laughs> because of the internet, it's be fucking hell. Um so it's Paula's fault this time. Noted that they had spent a lot of time together after she broke up with their boyfriend for about six months, they socialized. They did not discuss a romantic relationship, nor did they have any sexual contact. Mr. Armstrong believed they were going to date because she was giving him signs. <laughs> I wonder what Lon's perspective of giving signs is in a just normal... Time, just, know, just speaking, just, it would seem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just giving him the time of day. I think the key words in this one was Mr. Armstrong noted. This is all coming from him. These are his admissions. He never had sex with Paula. Oh, he never let's, had... let's not go there. That's a, that's a topic know, for another careful. time. No, I know, but I'm just, well, we just glossed right over it. I mean, I think it's important to mention. This is coming from him. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is something that we are going to talk about in detail, probably. We'll have to do the Virgin Debate Mark II, I think, at some point. I think it's kind of got to be done. Uh, have you guys got page two in front of you? It's on the screen now, but just in case you're not actually looking at the stream yeah, good. screen. Yeah, good. I've got it. Tiffany, have you got page two? Yes, I do. Okay. All right. Um... Uh, his heart was broken. You see, the thing is, none of this kind of... It's its funny to read, but it doesn't mean anything, does it? <laughs> Working hard for it. Xavier is in the chat. Um, yeah, well, we're all in the same boat, guys. You know, we're uh, working hard there. You know, we're all, we're all kind of being manipulated by this guy. So we might as well just embrace it and crack on and have fun, I reckon. You know, we haven't got any choice before we all end up in prison anyway, so... You know, grab your bowls of sugar and just have a laugh. You know, and while you while you've still got your freedom, I say, um, uh, yeah, because his heart's broken, like by like anybody he speaks to, isn't it? So, like, like I mean, in theory, it could have been his first. It could have been like a real heartbreak for Lon because it was a real person as opposed to some robot. Or it could be the first phase of stalking. <laughs> but according to Lauren, he had a girlfriend when he was 19. So it's not, you know, whether we believe that or not is another story. But it's not like this is the, the first woman Lauren, you know, had ever had some kind of relationship with by his own admission and they never they were never even dating and as you said they never even discussed a romantic relationship he made it all up in his head this she was giving him signs we were working towards a relationship oh, jesus none of that was stated he come on just Andrew, let, us, let us talk about paula come on come on let us go <laughs> I know it's a whole history. Yeah. We can we can briefly touch upon it. I don't. I, we, the thing is, we can't start going into detail about whether he did or not because that would literally take up the whole fucking rest of the stream. Um, I think I speak for Tiffany as well. Um, I keep oscillating between yes and no. One day I'm like, he, he, something happened there when I listen to it, and then I think actually no, I'm thinking you know, that's the way I'm kind of going with it. Well, let's take what we do know real quick. He used to s sit in a bar where she worked. Probably, again, this is all his initiative. She never took any initiative to see him. So he went to see her. He went to her house because 
she didn't give she him. She worked in the bar. She worked in the bar. She worked in the bar. Right. And that, he that, would hang out at the bar every single night while wow. he was working. Like, how and many then, desperate guys then, do you well, speak to in real life that go, oh, yeah, the, the girl behind the bar really likes me? It's like, dude, no, she fucking that's doesn't. That's the dude. That's the dude we're talking about. And he managed to get her to go to Denny's with him. Now, I'm not sure if I believe that. Maybe once, he said. But after that, he went to her house. And not knowing that her ex he keeps calling her ex-fiance. You don't know if he's a boy. We, we don't know what this out. But the reason why he went to her house is because she never gave him her number. That's huge. You would think if they were close, if they wanted to spend time with each other, and it was a mutual thing, that they would at least exchange phone numbers, right? Yeah, I just think how creeped out I would be if some dude came into my work every night and then showed up at my house uninvited so, yeah. and unannounced. That's what we're dealing with here. And 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 every time he recounts the sex, he makes sure he makes it a point to say that the dude dropped me off, uh, dropped her off. I, I do was just there, I, and she made the first move, and like he had, you know, he was just so irresistible. And, and the dude realized that he's going to see to Lauren's alpha status and give him his girl. Um, <laughs> he knocked him nor whatever that that, uh, that Braveheart uh, term was, you know. But uh, and, and then he laughs it off. And then another story, he tells you that he was so distraught, he tried to kill himself. I mean, there's, there's two different stories here. I think what we'll have to do is... Um get like the full kind of transcript of what he said and go over it in a stream and see if we can decide um what we think happened because as bizarre because is some more burkitt style introspection right why do we give a shit if lorm did this paula or not but we all do massively like i care i'm interested in it more than i am like about some of the books I'm reading or shit that goes on at work. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, I'm interested in it, but I'm not as invested in it. I, I feel like there are lots of people who really, really want Lauren to be a virgin. Yeah, I know that. We'll, we'll, we'll take it as we find it. Oh, that, yeah, that's some people... Yeah. There's something interesting to bring up is I've almost noticed some people getting aggressive with regard to their viewpoint I'm one of those on it. Guys, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's bizarre. Like I remember the um, <laughs> the stream Eisenberg did. I think um, I think was oh, yeah. involved in it. He's in the chat as well. I can't remember who else was, but I remember listening to it. I think there was he was talking to somebody who, who wasn't. He's not in the community anymore. But it wasn't. It was like they were arguing. It was like fucking yeah. hell. Like re- people have really strong opinions about it to the point of aggression. It's like fucking hell. Like, you know, it's really strange. It's like taking something funny away from us. You know, we're offended by that. That's I'm sorry. But that that's what it, that's what that means to me. But but there are there are two stories that, that are 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 what uh landmarks in in uh in Lauren's life. One is the basketball story and the other is Paula. I nah, the Mike's mom story. I think there's only me that me and, mom have a name. me and Adam are really like um we're really interested in having a laugh about that. We almost wanted to turn it into a sitcom because that scenario is fucking priceless. Just imagine if you had a sitcom where Mike's mum was going around meeting all these guys and had to bang these fellas while the son was in the other room or... But, you know, and in Lon's house or flat, it's even more funny because he's got no bed. You know, and then Kayla's there on the screen watching what's going on. The comedy potential is brilliant. Well, I what? call absolute bullshit on the Mike's mom. I know, but that's what's so funny about it, because it, you just know it's all made up. <laughs> yeah, because he's never told that story before. And Lauren no, shared everything with the, with the catfish over the years. To, to like Shin mentioned earlier, it's gone to the point now where if Lauren's trying to think of something he can share about himself that hasn't <clears throat> already been shared, he's talking about how him and his brothers used to sell rotten wood and pretend it was meat at a meat market in the woods. Oh, weird, weird kids, man. Weird kids. And sharing about his first wet dream. That, that's what he's resorted to now. So if he had sex with Mike's mom, if poor little Mike 
19 year old Mike was out in the living room and Lauren's getting it on with his mom. I think he would have shared that story before. Imagine like, if he, he continued that story and said, Mike went over to the computer and started talking to Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> the cam was on. Yeah, the oh, you. Oh, Mike... so funny. And then Lauren came Mike out and get raced into out. the karaoke bar. <laughs> he was 19. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't add up. Do you know what I think? He has told a variation it? of that story, though. Oh. Oh, has he? I thought that yeah, was the first he had. time. No, this oh, is more oh, detail, but he did talk about a woman, and I believe he's talking about this woman <laughs> that was pestering him all night. Oh yeah. Leave him all alone. Over. Yeah. You yeah. Just here. Yeah. And I think if if my memory is correct, I believe that he said that Mike, the son drove around or went to Walmart or something. I don't know why Walmart is always an Everybody goes to Walmart, yeah. yeah. Walmart or Tony's trailer. Right. And but the him and the mother went back to Lauren's apartment and had sex. Which doesn't make sense because according to him he said that Mike and his mom lived just down the street from the bar. Why wouldn't they go to a place that was furnished? Maybe of course, it was yeah. Lauren no, it's not. when this supposedly happened. I've got a question for all three of you, right, before I forget. If we had a lawn sex tape in 4K definition and it went on for quite a while, would you all watch it? Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Tiffany? Oh, what do you mean Tiffany? it went on for quite a while? What does that mean? Well, I suppose, you know, it, it's detailed is what I'm saying. It, it's not like you're quick. Helicopter for the first 75 minutes. Let's just say it was t- uh, 25 minutes long. And it was, a, it was you know, detailed. <laughs> Would you watch it? I don't know if I can make it 25 minutes. I'd be, I'd be studying to make sure it's really him. <laughs> 87 seconds, someone just said. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, no, would you... I know this is a crazy... This is one of my crazy fucking bizarre time... Well, it's not time traveling because it never fucking happened, but if you... Let's just say, right, the Paula thing did happen and for some bizarre reason, Roddy Roddy Peeper um, had a 4K camera and fucking recorded it. He's... He's rowdy, rowdy people. Uh, and, sorry, I'm going to start giggling now. Um, we had a video of it in good definition. Would you all watch it? And and this is a consequence-free environment where we didn't have to embarrass Paula, by the way. Just, you know. Yeah, I, I don't think I'd, you know, I'd, I'd watch it enough to see what it was. Yeah, <laughs> That's a yes, I'd then, dude. Yeah. I, to be honest with you, I probably would, too, because... I, in my mind, I'm thinking something funny is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to. I would also oh, depend yeah. on other people in the community to watch it and timestamp certain things. <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine I, I how hilarious to... those timestamps would be? <laughs> I, I'd want to see. I w- I'd want to see the various positions he was teaching Kayla, uh, actually in operation. I want to see the leg up on the whatever he said. Um, I'm, I want to see. Oh, what is it? His, yeah. I, I want to see if he would be inside her all night long too. I'd want to see if he could. I want to both fit in the bathtub whilst he held a butt. <laughs> I want to see her just go around. Yes. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Stirring the food on the stove while he. Yeah, she's making mac and cheese, and he's oh, yeah. making something else. Amanda James, That's Amanda hot. James, That's right? Hot. You you find probably. Law more disgusting than anybody I've ever spoke to. Would you watch that theoretical tape? Yeah, I would take a, I would take a peek. I would Your be dog answered for you then. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I would be curious if he growls. You know, do you remember that call, Andrew? You probably haven't heard it, um, but he's, he's yes, Jim knows. <laughs> he is having phone sex with a catfish and he's just fucking growling like a like a beast it's horrible oh yeah <laughs> if dan burst in the room before lord climax is that's what working you can be. hear that his teeth are gritted and like clenched and he's growling i'm not gonna do it but he's growling 
It's fucking terrifying and horrible. And I, I wonder if um, a woman would have to suffer through that. This Sadie would be jumping. growling in her ear. So I'd watch it just for that. And I'd be very disappointed if he didn't. I don't be, think... I, what about you? I don't think there's a person in this community who'd, be, who would, who'd not be able to watch it. Just think yeah, of, of the curiosity. Like... It's like it'd be like this forbidden kind of um, fruit, wouldn't it? You know, you'd be like, I shouldn't fuck. Oh, fuck it. You know, then you just buy a new TV just for the sake of it. <laughs> well, I think anybody in the community who has seen his fish hook would do would watch it. There are a lot that's, of people. That's who everybody. No, there are a lot of people. Who right, we've it. all seen. We've seen. Don't you have much a picture of, of it on your body. fridge, Amanda James? Yeah, I have a picture of Lauren's dick on my fridge. Yeah, and, and was trying to make a poster down. It's one of my favorites. It's the one perfect. Casey described it in a call. Lauren is bent over with his head between his legs, taking a picture yeah. of his liberal asshole, and that one's on my fridge. I think that's so hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I mean, think... we've seen... So much of Lauren, a, a sex tape, like he hasn't left anything really to to the imagination. So it's not with regard to seeing his naked body, though. It's just the intrigue of seeing him engaging in this act that is kind yeah, of with who, with who. I mean, that's that Paul. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It could Paul or, oh, Paul or whoever. Yeah, a young Lauren. Yeah, and we've, you know, you guys, we've also seen him dance. So we know that rhythm. Oh, God. Seeing him dance is almost like watching an alien. Like, it's the most bizarre thing. It's 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 very strange. It's I don't know how to describe it, really. It's kind of like some kind of parallel universe where some alien is trying to dance and has never heard an Earth song before. And it's like, what the fuck is he doing? Like, it's really weird. Yeah. Michael is saying that he, he wouldn't watch it. He doesn't want PTSD, and I think that's a lie. I think he would definitely watch it. Yeah. We'll have a watch party. You guys will be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be brilliant. Anyway, um, let's. we've been talking for 45 minutes and hardly done anything. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, anyway... We will talk about those subjects in, in uh, oh, very quickly. So, you know, like we used to talk about these time-traveling vouchers that we would have, which is fucking weird, and, you know, turn up in Lauren's life. We could have some kind of addition to that where we could, like, talk about a potential quantum leap moment where we could jump into the body temporarily of one of the characters in Lauren's life and do something at some point you know, just to fuck with him. <laughs> like, how cool would that be, you know, like... you? Oh, I'd want to of... be probation. Well, that's what I mean. You'd want to be probation. Would you want to... I'd be Sherry Twist in I the chat. I want to be a scum, fucking... I'd be Sherry Twist in the chat fucking with him when he's, um, you know, talking to Kayla. I just... I just... I just fucking... Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'd just be interesting. I want to be the karaoke host that skips over him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> I want to be one of those cops that had him at gunpoint with with an itchy trigger finger. <laughs> kind of like, Pop him in the ass. Oh dear, oh dear. Um, yeah. Anyway, right. Let's stop doing these bizarre excursions. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, I have to squint because my eyes are shit. Um, Do you want me to read it? Yeah, please. I can barely see. <clears throat> His heart was broken when she began dating someone else. Since then, he has had two girlfriends. One relationship lasted three weeks and the other one week. He texts and talks to several women who are in other states. He reports he's waiting for them to come visit him and demonstrate their affection for him by following through on what they say they will do. Mr. Armstrong reports he has forgiven his family members for abusing him. He noted that he lost trust because of the abuse and believes his family members should have noticed the abuse. However, now it's behind him. Mr. Armstrong also said he grew up in a small town and that's why he's so trusting of women who record and then post to the recordings on the internet. Uh, can, I, can I stop for one second? Um, 
the part, part where he says he forgives his family for abusing him, he's not talking about the alleged sexual abuse. He's talking about the financial abuse, right? You mean the mac and cheese incident? Mac and cheese and, you know, uh, taking Betty's money and not giving it back, making him leave, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, is he, that's what I he's think talking it could about? be. Yeah. Well, I don't know, because he says um, he they believes his family the members abuse. should have noticed it, right? Well, that well. could also work for the money, right. too. Right. That right. somebody should have stopped him. Yeah, yeah he yeah. sold all his stuff, two loads of truck uh, uh, tools for 600 bucks, and sold his $60,000 house for $8,000. They should have noticed that. Mm-hmm. And Sharon begged him not to leave. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, <laughs> so let's get into the polygraph reports. Ooh. So On this April is, 19th. Sorry, mm-hmm. Tiffany, I'm just doing my shin interruption. Oh, sorry, shin. Um, wow. uh, th- this is, so before the pol- polygraph starts was all his self-assessment. This is an, here we start the actual proper body of the actual document, isn't it? No, they're still going into modalities. They're going into polygraph right now. They're still recounting the history, his history a little bit. Right. I think that's the way I read it. Yeah, so they're going to be reporting on what the, each of those polygraphs resulted in, and then they're going to say some of the things that he said. So I can see some quotes in here, but it's going to just be a summary of what happened. Okay, doke. It's going to show he's a really reliable reporter. That's what <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> On April 19th, 2019, Mr. Armstrong failed to question about whether he had used alcohol in the past year. During the post-polygraph test, Mr. Armstrong acknowledged drinking beer with his friend Tony and Tony's wife. On July 19th, 2019, Mr. Armstrong informed the polygrapher that in addition to drinking beer at Tony's, he had also drunk alcohol at Alton's, a friend, and at home. He said he was getting drunk about once per week on the weekends over the past 16 months up until two weeks ago. He acknowledged drinking alcohol after the April 19th failed polygraph. Mr. Armstrong failed to the polygraph questions about his drinking. He explained that he may have minimized his drinking with Tony. On June 9th. uh, Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, that's when he went to jail. On June 9th, 2020, Mr. Armstrong failed to polygraph about accessing the internet. He said that he had his aunt access the internet for him during during job searches. He denied accessing the internet by any other means. On July 13th, 2020, Mr. Armstrong acknowledged he had accessed his mother's computer to look at YouTube to find out what people were saying about him. He passed to the polygraph questions about other computer use. Ooh, I love that. Let's, I like that. I would, I, do you know what was talking oh. about quantum leap tokens and whatnot? I would love to be standing yeah. there when he's typing his own name on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> How did you begin? On February 17th, 2021, Mr. Armstrong failed a polygraph test about accessing the internet searching for media involving minors for sexual stimulation and using fantasies involving minors for sexual stimulation in the past seven months. During the post-test interview, Mr. Armstrong acknowledged fantasizing about 10 to 14-year-old girls during masturbation. In May of 2021, Mr. Armstrong failed a polygraph test about looking at images of minors for sexual stimulation and looking at the bare sexual organs of a person under the age of 18. Can we, um, sorry, Tiffany, can we pause there? Because we've got a lot to go off there. I'd like yeah, to kind of mm-hmm. split it up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so obviously these are probably, the, when this report went out, I think it was on Blue Boy's channel, uh, this kind of enraged people. I remember looking at some of the comments, and for obvious reasons, because, you know, even myself, I used to think that he was kind of, used to sometimes think he was an opportunist there's there's obvi- you only have to read the chat log to know that there's some there's a there's a genuine attraction he has you know when he talks about kayla and photographs and all that but to sort of read it in this kind of official format and to see that he's still indulging in that 
he's accessing the after everything he's done is pretty shocking, isn't it? It, yeah. it makes you wonder where what he's doing, what he's accessing. Yeah. Like the uh, the naked genitals. Where where's right. he finding that? That's what I was just wondering. What is he, what is that about? He because pictures? he never explains that. No. I mean he actually proactively looked around for these things. Now I can understand him going to like a Toys R Us website or something and seeing a bunch of kids maybe there, but when you say naked genitals, that's like uh, that's that's definitely uh, that's definitely child porn, unless he's got personal pictures of family members maybe as babies. I mean, we've got to kind of say that that's probably not happened. He's he's clearly because you're right. I mean, luckily, I don't know how one would access such photography. I can only imagine that you go on the dark web. Um, just have a he's okay. never going to have he's never going to um, be able to no. go on there as I understand right. it from what someone once told me going on there is not something you have to know what you're doing I believe to um, go on the dark web I don't think it's like if I want to you know look at a fucking celebrity nude I can just do a google search I never do that of course but I wouldn't imagine you can do that with this. You know, I would imagine there's some kind of, you know. So it's very, I mean, also, can we, we have to, we have to ask the question, and I'm not trying to stick up for long. We have to, you know, we, 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 I think we can say that we can, how much faith can we put in these tests? So the saying here, Mr. Armstrong failed a test about accents in the internet searching for media involving sexual stimulation. Now, he, he, he will obviously be asked these questions as part of his kind of conditions that he's under, and he's failed the tests. So, Blue Boy just piped in with uh, with a response. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Andrew. Uh, he explained it away by having a new picture of his nephew as a baby as to why he failed. Nephew? But That's the question, bullshit. The- well, that's what he said. It's, oh, no, no, sorry. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that everybody knows that's nonsense. <laughs> that's bullshit, blue boy. Yeah. I, he wouldn't dare to search for images like that on a computer. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think he, he would dare to. He's... And they searched his trailer after this, if I am remembering correctly. Right. This is what triggered the search, and they didn't, they didn't find anything. But they also didn't find... Um, uh, Lamandre, I think. Maybe they and... did. And let him have it. <laughs> yeah, it's not illegal to have a dildo, right? I, I'm sure it doesn't violate probation, but um, I hope they did find it. That would have been hilarious. But yeah, I'm wondering how he would have access to look at the bare sexual organs of a minor. Well, Blue Boy just explained it was from, from some family pictures, but he associates it with uh, with his nephew. But, but isn't the question searching online that? though? Like, well, not... that's another one. He said he was looking for images, to, uh, but doesn't necessarily mean he was looking. You know, he found he was looking for a nude. Can you imagine Lauren at a, at a search engine trying to put in uh, uh, descriptive words? I, I can't imagine him finding <laughs> anything. Um, but I believe. Well, Blue Boy says that they probably found those. Well, he said he admitted it. I guess that. that um, we see it it's here. Well, I don't know if he went into a sa- his safe. I'm not sure what they can do in that regard. Um, but he also said that Lamandre was just sitting in his sock dra- drawer, and they definitely saw it. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at it, smelled it, put it down. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh my uh, God! I can't believe I, he still has that thing. I wonder if they went in there with hazmat suits, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, after seeing the condition that that trailer is in, that's oh, insane. Yeah. Insane. Just complete chaos. I'm going a minute. Right, right. Can I just go back and, and just specify, because I obviously didn't listen properly. It says, he failed a test about accessing the internet, searching for media involving minors for sexual stimulation. So that could be any pictures of minors, couldn't right. it? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it, will but just it could take... be any media, though, right? It could be on TV. 
you know, it's not necessarily just online. Yeah, I think probation has to rein his mother in. They've got to explain to him that he should not be on her on her on her computer. And if they have reason to believe that he's using it to violate his probation, then maybe they can get a warrant uh, to, to seize it and check it out, see what he's doing, because that seems to be where the criminal path is leading. So his mother should just shut him down. I think that's where his, most of his searches are being done. Mm. Absolutely, because even when he did get his computer back, he's he's not going to be doing that on his computer. He's downloading shit for like three days. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, updates. Yeah. But. So that's quite vague, really. Um, you, you know, using the internet to... Um, access the um i'm sorry i'm reading the wrong bit um involving minors for sexual stimulation that could just be a fucking i don't know ballet or anything yeah it could be anything um sale yeah exactly and it goes on to say and using fantasies involving minors for sexual stim using fantasies Involving minors for sexual stimulation. What does so that what mean? are they saying? He failed questions about that, or he admitted to it after the polygraph? What, is, what are they saying? No, uh, he, he, saying failed, he failed the test, meaning right, and then he, they were then asking he, him questions. And he spilled his guts, right? Okay. Because he he may have explained it, but then after that, that's when they went to his trailer. Because they had, you know, that was the purpose of, of doing that. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Armstrong's acknowledged fantasizing about 10 to 14 year old girls during masturbation. Now, I believe, someone correct me if I'm wrong, during one of the calls, he said something very odd, which I couldn't get me around entirely, although me and Adam had a good laugh at it, was that it was he was fantasizing about the girls he used to know at school, but it was... Yes. But... Mm-hmm. Like that's somehow acceptable. <laughs> oh well, it was. I knew them when I was oh, we fourteen, same, eh? but you're not fourteen anymore, dude. Yeah. It, it reminds me of the well, Walter maybe it Babs kind of is uh, the Walter Babs decoy photo where they used uh, somebody from Dateline staff image as their as a child. It kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, his defense could be well, they're not they're not a child anymore. Um... But yeah, that's that's kind of a very uh, you you just know that that's Lorne's brain trying to come up with some kind of excuse which really kind of lands him in it even more, really. Mm-hmm. So I think we can safely say from that that he still gets himself off on those kind of impulses, which is or those kind of you know compul whatever you want to label it. Um, which, you know, we don't like to think about it, really, because when we go down that road, the kind of fun of all, you know, the lawn stuff kind of stops and you get you kind of get into that serious mode. It kind of turns your stomach a little bit, doesn't it? Um, but, of course... It makes you feel know him. It makes you feel like we, don't re- we didn't realise how dangerous he is. That's what it makes me feel like. Well, I think, I think we kind of forget sometimes, because of how bashful and stupid he is and kind of so off the cuff with his ridiculousness that we kind of it's almost like we don't see him as kind of a real person in a way he's kind of like this crazy character yeah yeah because he's kind of two-dimensional so i think that when we see stuff like this it's kind of a bit of a shock really and 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 it, it, it it's it's not easy to think about you know because we i mean of course it isn't because we don't want to think about anybody doing that i mean we must also remember that some people um are born like this and have no choice you know there was that documentary i posted on my channel ages ago about that guy who has these attractions and he was like really working to overcome it and that's what you would think that you would do in that situation you wouldn't indulge in it would you which is why these people are seen as despicable because rather than trying to get help they're just you know just getting themselves off which is just it's unconscionable. I, I don't think you can quite grasp it, you know. Well, about the high school girls, when, when Lauren was um, explaining that, trying to explain it away to Casey, he mentioned that one of the girls, I think her name was Sherry, and 
he he said he liked her in high school or they dated in high school or something but then he saw her again if i'm remembering correctly i might not be um but i i believe he said he saw her again when they were both like 30 years old and instead of choosing to think about the 30 year old uh, version of this girl he chose to fantasize about the 14 year old version of this girl and i, I think that says a lot that's true so and that girl in Little House of the Prairie, he was talking about her too as a child on the show. And also he saw her recently in a uh, in something when she was an adult. And we know what he was jerking off to. It's crazy. It's, 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 it makes you angry after everything he's been through. He's still in sex offender class, this guy. He, does, he believes, or at least he says he doesn't belong there. But yet here he is. You know, uh, Tiffany, were you a little bit surprised at all when you read this? Um, I wouldn't say surprised. Definitely angry. I think any time something like this comes up, I get really angry. Yeah. And so, no, not not necessarily surprised. I guess, I guess it's just that we only see a small part. Of Lauren, we don't see him in his day to day life. We we hear him on the phone, and we hear what he's willing to talk about, and though all of those things are taken with huge grains of salt because there there's so much lying that's in there. And so when you when you look at this from somebody who is a professional, somebody who is a third party who has the ability to look at all of Lauren. Um, probably everything too, if everything's in the file. Um, but they're able to see all the probation stuff. They're able to see what the courts have said. They're able to see what tr the treatment providers have said. And we don't know any of that. The only way that we know is when he provides something like this or when he talks about it. And even when he's talking about it, you can hear how Lauren communicates. He, he doesn't communicate well. He's, he really, really struggles with speaking and bringing a thought across in a cohesive way so that it's understood. He's not able to answer questions. He just mumbles and stutters, and he has, he has a difficult time. He, most of the time, he completely misses the point as well. So a lot of that stuff that we're getting from him, you know, of course, we can't really believe it. So hearing it from this person and also the different uh, probation reports that we've been able to see, it, it really brings things home. I think, I think it really highlights how dangerous of a person he is, how he hasn't been rehabilitated at all mm. at a single thing. I cannot think of a single thing that he has grown from in all of his experience. Everything just continuously comes back to Xavier. And that's that's really shocking to me. You know, and, and to to read it, to read what is happening with him in his polygraphs. I know he's been been having these questions come up in polygraphs throughout the time that he's been out. So when he's been having them twice a year and then intermittently when they feel like there's a problem and they need to investigate something. He, he's been able to kind of slide by and he, he has lied. And that's why, of course, the, these, these polygraphs aren't a hundred percent, but I think that they're able to, at least this time to finally get the stuff where it comes to the young kids. And I, I just, I don't really know what probation's plan is. I don't know what his treatment plan is or anything like that, but this is this is this, a huge threat to everybody around him. Yeah. This is really scary yeah. to see. So he's not just some bumbling idiot who, who's screaming about Rod or Todd or <laughs> Jeffrey and the doctor and everyone else. It, it's not anything like that. It's that he is a really dangerous person. And like I was saying before, um, an, another point about only seeing a snapshot of Lauren and over the phone and things like that. When that, when Roy's friend came over to take a look at the shed that she was going to be living in 
And her comment to him about, oh, you're the one who's been following me around. That, I, I think that's him. And, and I think that's really, that's a really scary. I mean, of course, we don't know this person either. Um, and why she would have made a comment like that. That's definitely really interesting. I would have loved to speak with her and get more out of that. You know, why do you think it was, do you recognize his truck or, you know, how many times does he drive by? What does he do? Um, but that's Lorne. He, he's a creepy guy. Yeah, he's the type so. of person, if he if he saw a woman at Walmart or a girl in Walmart that he was interested in, he would follow her around. There's he no would, doubt. Go to her aisle. Yeah, he would go to her, he would go to her aisle. He would be yeah, he he is that he is that guy and God forbid she makes eye contact with him because that is that's a green light for him. Or and smiles. he's going to be thinking about her. Yeah. He's going to be thinking about her. It's it's really disgusting. I think you you you've kind of hit the nail on the head there Tiffany as well with regard to him being dangerous but not being aware at all. He thinks he's a nice guy, or at least he likes to think he's a nice guy, but yet he is dangerous. He is a stalker. You know, he is somebody who has these attractions. He's somebody that, as we know, when the the, the camera's not on him, he'll do anything. He's got no self-control. So, you yeah. know, the Rhoda situation, I think, is a perfect example, is that if, if he thinks no one is looking, he'll do anything. The chat log is a great thing. Yeah, exactly. As, as Tiffany once put it, Lawn in the wild. That's why I kind of like that so much because it's like this is what he do he would do when he thinks no one's watching, and that means that if the opportunity arises, he'll literally do anything. And you know, I, I think that these professionals know all too well what they're dealing with. They will see all kinds of different people. Um, yeah, yeah, and I, I think Tiffany is, you know is spot on when she says that we don't know what's in that probation file. We don't know about those other psychological yeah. analysis that yeah. we don't have access to. And and the reason why we know it's probably something serious is because he's still in fucking class. And if you listen to him, it's because they want him in a face to face relationship or they change providers or he did the book already, you know, all these stupid things. But we, we know that there's got to be an underlying pathology that's keeping him there. It has to be. And I'd love to get my hands on those reports. Listen, are you listening, future catfish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we make our requests now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I think it's it's important to to. Well, I mean, obviously, the the way that this report's going, we could not sort of talk talk about it, is the, the dangerous element to him. But you know, the stalking thing, hundred percent. I think it's proven that's from numerous stories that we've heard even from stuff he said i mean he stopped kayla really didn't he if you think about it you know mm -hmm. as much as he possibly could you know you know ex derek and you know leave the cam on and you know tell your parents to fuck off and all this kind of stuff he's he's he did it there with a 13 year old it's the same playbook too it's the same fucking playbook mm. with every with, with the underage decoy, probably with Molly for all we know, and all of these catfish, the same, same thing. I am the, I am the center of your universe. You have to always be thinking about me. You, oh, you cannot be, you cannot have any male figure in your life. You can't even have friends. Same isolationist tact tactics, same rage, jealousy, rage, same guy from the very, probably since he was, 11 probably since he was younger than that when he didn't get the attention he wanted from his parents who were giving it to other one of his siblings it sort you know? of leads us a little bit onto I don't, I don't want to talk about this in any detail because i know this brings strong strong feelings up especially for you shane and one about, about the uh this person that's um allegedly friends with lawn we don't know who yeah we, person. We, we, we're not we, interested in any kind of you yeah. know sort of but it Maybe we can talk about it some other time because it's like, what What would... I mean, we can talk about a scenario of someone being friends with Lorne. You, you, you can't... He's not any... He hasn't got any traits that someone could possibly no. be friends no, with just someone. This. Just this. 
just this. This is the only reason why somebody would want to spend any time with him. This is it. Um, but yeah. you know, we can go into that. I mean, that to me, I consider that to be dangerous. Um, you know, I can't imagine bringing a, bringing a female into that trailer, let alone sleep overnight. I couldn't imagine doing something like that. Um, and for whatever content you get out of it, I quite frankly, I don't think I would be interested. Um, I don't think I'd learn that much. Well, I think the gist of it is it's not somebody's doing it for content, but you know, maybe it's a top the conversation for another time because I don't, I personally don't have any of the facts. I just saw that, you know, the post that was put out there and yeah. Yeah, I think it's going over the line. <clears throat> oh sure. I just find it hard to understand how someone could overlook all all the information that we have and yeah. and not see through because I think I think Lauren can be charming if you don't know. And I, I can't believe I just said that. But he's a friendly guy. You know, he's he's desperate. And, and there's certainly a creepiness under that. But he wants on the to very come across surface, as being friendly, doesn't he? Yeah. And on it's the very charming. surface. Charming and, yeah, and think, funny. That's what he, he wants to come off as. Well, I think he, he could have, you know, I mean, you might meet him in a, I don't know, or at the yard sale or something and say, wow, that was a friendly guy. He just talked my ear off. And and if you don't know what we know, then maybe you could be fooled by that temporarily. But to know everything that we know, all these horrible things, and be somehow okay to overlook that and and be his friend and say, well, he's nice to me. So... Well, do we yeah. know the motive? Do we know whether that they have a genuine friendship, or or is this just another trial? Well, that's what it. I mean, Blue Boy would have to go into that, I guess. But it, that's I mean, what it, they made it sound like. Is well, that no, they weren't interested out. in trolling Lauren. So yeah. either they lied about that, and they did have a plan. In, in which case, maybe they did. Maybe they just didn't trust anybody to know what they were doing. But they certainly gave the well, not just gave the impression. They straight out said, you know, no, I'm not, I'm not trolling. I'm not catfishing. I, um, you know, it, he's nice. We could we can? I had a good time. It could be that they're saying that so that he doesn't figure out in any way that he's getting catfished. That's a possibility. That's possibly, but why? Could we be being? Talk? Could we be being trolled? Could we be? No, that's okay. that's what. It, th why 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 speak to if you want to keep it such a secret, then why speak to people in the community at all about it? You know what I mean? Like, why talk to to, to you know people in the community and lie to them and say no, I'm not trolling him. I'm just, I'm just, you know just hanging out. I had a good time. Yeah, why not no, just exactly. keep it to yourself? That's trolling us. That's trolling us. Um, Blue Boys just said he can go into all the detail we want when we want to stream on the topic. So I think what oh, we'll do that. is we'll uh, we'll we'll kind of gloss over that a little bit because I do find it very interesting. Um, oh yeah, really, yeah. really interesting. And then maybe oh, once, once we get the facts as we know them, because I'm filling a lot of blanks here, and I don't want to, I don't want to yeah. come to conclusions that are not there. So we'll do it another time because it's kind of like I, what I will say. I believe it's kind of a really significant <coughs> event because I know that Ember went there, but that was in the purpose of fucking with him, you know. That was so, true. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't count. As we understand it, this is someone who's gone there, you know, and, and Socks recorded him, and there was the stuff with Roy's Mrs. I'm not really interested in that, but. <laughs> uh, I mean, it is funny. Um, that was crazy. But, yeah. yeah, but this is kind of interesting. If someone's gone there for the purposes of being nice to him, it could be. We could just be, you know, giving it sort of a credence that it doesn't have. It could just be someone who's crazy. There's crazy people out there, strangely enough. Um, so, but it's definitely worth talking about. I think at some point, maybe. Have you got any very very quick thoughts on it, Tiffany? Without going into too much i do um i think that it just it highlights how dangerous a predator is that he's able to disarm people and that's the thing you see lorne at the yard sale and he's he laughs at everything he's just yeah. a happy guy and he will he'll tell you a stupid joke or he'll 
He'll tell you a story. He'll help you out with your car if it doesn't start. And he'll do all those kinds of things. And, th- and that's the thing that that is so dangerous about him. That's why the registry is is necessary because people shouldn't forget. Look at the guy who's nice to you. Look at what he's also capable of. Right. Look at what he did when mm-hmm. he thought that nobody was watching. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you put your guard down and, and you need to be careful. And that that's how all this stuff happens. Oh, he's, you know, he's a sex offender, but he's not, he's not that bad of a guy. No. You know, and then but, all the justifications can start happening. Well, he didn't have a real victim. It was a sting. He was stopped. He's being monitored by probation. You know, he's fun. I had a good time hanging out. Well, with yeah. Him. Okay. Well, what's fun about him? I'm curious. What What do they find to be fun and enjoyable? Well, I think I think it's it's just his perhaps his general demeanor. Well, just being Lauren in the in the flesh rather than on on YouTube. Uh, you know, that's the only thing I could think of. What does he actually have to offer a new friend? Well, I think he's very eager to have a friend. So he's going to be very helpful, be on his best behavior. He's going to try to be funny and, you know, do anything he can to keep a friend. And the like you were saying, Tiffany, about like the justifications can come out, the excuses. Oh, he didn't have a real victim. You could say that if you didn't know what we know, and we know yeah. that he he does. That's or what's so sentences. alarming to me, to, to be, well, I mean, there's a real girl that he groomed and showed himself naked to and went right. to me, and right. God only knows what, what really happened. We know all, all that. We heard what he did with Rhoda. So the justifications don't fly. That's the whole point the whole point of why we're here is because he makes all these excuses and they're they're so ridiculous so it's we know who he is now it's annoying honestly it's 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 baffling to me like what are you doing how do you overlook any of that because he was nice to you logistically speaking he they would have to go through probation i would imagine for this to happen, I would imagine. Yeah, Why? Are, are people allowed to stay over? Obviously, the kids thing. If they had children, that's that's a, a no-brainer question. But is he allowed to have guests over? He, I don't he see is, why. Not. It's a tough he, call. he is, of course. Probation is very wary of people that Lauren meets through the internet, which is how he meets everybody. I don't know why they're being so paranoid. <laughs> exactly. So they, um, I think that they would have to uh, talk to probation. Well, he, he at least has to, uh, uh, you know, update them on what's going on in his life. And if he knows two people are coming from another country to visit him in, uh, as a house guest, I would imagine that's going to come up in conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, sure. and, and I would imagine, again, yeah. uh, it's not necessarily the fact that it's a love interest in this case. Mm-hmm. It's just, It's a husband and wife, which is fucking weird to begin with. But uh, the the probation would still need to determine whether these people were minors or not. It, it so my guess is they may have done uh, a, a, maybe a, a, a background check or, or given them enough information to satisfy that requirement. Who knows? <clears throat> and, and, and again, knowing Lauren, the big thing with him, especially with the robot and Jan, um, uh, Casey, is that if you talk to probation, you're real now. You know, I can trust you. And I can imagine that went a long way with him in accepting those guys into his house. Do you know, I'm pretty sure probation have got opened up a new department to deal with Lauren. Like, they'd be <laughs> like fucking hiring new people and building a new office just to deal with him. Do you know what was funny, though? I was watching one of the um, Heelborn calls, which was the... <laughs> there was... <laughs> There was like pictures on one side. So there's a picture of Willy Wonka, a picture of a robot, and a picture of Darth Vader. And then you've got Lauren <laughs> in the other room. I'm just thinking, can you imagine what one of those probation guys must be thinking when they see that? <laughs> like, can you imagine like what must be going through their head? It's like, they they skip the right over is, the singing. They're Lauren like, part. what is this guy doing now? It's like, oh my fucking God. It's like, he's singing to this fucking ventilator that's Darth Vader <laughs> breathing. <laughs> <laughs> what do they do for entertainment at night? What do they play scat? What do they do? I mean, what is fun? I'm just wondering. Do they take them out? 
Uh, I so, think I'd use my yeah. fucking quantum leap voucher to go in that probation office. Uh, I'm, just... I'm tempted, man. I'm tempted, but... <laughs> <laughs> Can you save people? Can you use that voucher to save people? Pull them out of there? Well, I've got good news Well, you news know what always you. gets me? Carry on. I, you would think that Lauren would be so humiliated to have to go to his probation officer time and time, time again, and his probation officer says, look, Lauren, I found this online. You were catfished again. I told you you didn't listen. Or Lauren to have to go to them and say, well, I found out Casey was fake. He was fucking me, with me this whole time, and now I called her online. Wouldn't you be so humiliated and embarrassed? Yes, I thought I was dating a 24-year-old porn His victim star. mentality oh, saves him, right. now, doesn't it? Exactly like it's Tiffany was saying earlier. It's yeah. the victim mentality. He's not embarrassed. He has nothing to be embarrassed about. Yeah, because we're, we're the weirdos. We're the retards. Exactly. We're the sick. Yes. He is just too trusting. <laughs> he's too good of a guy. He trusts people too much because he's just too good. He he hopes that people are going to grow a conscience and and do the right thing, and him. everybody else just lets him down. It's not that he is a moron and and falls for it time and time again, despite everybody in his life telling him. That there are very clear red flags here. It's it's our fault, not his, and that's how he saves himself from the. I mean, because think of the shame <laughs> and the humiliation you would feel if your nude pictures, and especially the kind Lauren sent, they're not flattering. They're not good ones. <laughs> there are pictures of his asshole everywhere. There are pictures of <laughs> his dick through a piece of paper with with a, a marriage proposal written on it. Um, pictures of him doing naked yoga just the the most embarrassing things you could you could pass there's recordings of him having phone sex um with a man <laughs> with several men yeah. will. actually many will. many men well, will and there's will but there's also the ghost which oh, were played yeah. was played by by you know a few different dudes um and now there's casey I don't know if everybody knows this, but Casey is a man. Yeah. And I don't know if Lauren knows that. I hope so. Um, but yeah, it's all it's all so embarrassing, right? If like I you would. Go there, if I were to go there, I would load up a truckload of dog food, make sure the dogs are taken care of at the very least. I hope they did something like that. They brought over some food. Um, at least take care of the real victims in that place. They probably brought Lauren food. I they if had I brought to have, him gifts. Yeah. I bet you they did. Could you imagine driving up to that trailer <laughs> in the state that it's in and going inside no. and sleeping in it? And they probably they probably slept in his bed, I would imagine. Yeah, where would they sleep? That's the yeah. point. I think he has a spare room, doesn't he? No, that thing is filled with junk unless that's changed because remember that's where the christmas tree was supposed to be oh, they were they were, they, were <laughs> right. in shed. They, they slept in roy's roy's bed i bet he i bet he gave them his bed yeah i bet you're right Tiffany. oh jesus god that's Part a sacrifice of his... holy holy is it a, a, would you sleep I mean, in roy's a, bed hell no hell no i yeah. i've said this many times i'm like an hour an hour and a half away from lord and I wouldn't take my time to go. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to oh. the trailer. They came from a from another country. Blue Boy said that uh, Lauren got him a mattress. Was it a new one? What, just like, on the floor? Did he pick up a, <laughs> one up in the dump, or was it a new one? I guarantee he picked it up at the dump. Like an air mattress or something? Yeah, that, well, yeah they sell those at Walmart. Air Where mattress. would that be? Just in the middle of that living room? <laughs> where there's no apparently there's there's basically no wall there anymore just below the door and the ceiling right um, it's like you said shin nothing you get from that trip i don't think anything could be worth it i think these um, people whoever they are they're just lacking in any kind of self-awareness and there's no real understanding I think basically they're, 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 they've got more in common with Lorne than they have with us, basically, is is what I would take. But let's, yeah. I, I really think we should, 
if we all agree and would we get the yeah, facts because we'd, we'd, we're kind of I think it's in... I don't yeah, know yeah 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 well because That's it is great. yeah um, it is interesting I'm very eager to talk about it but um, you know I don't I don't want to start coming to conclusions um, so we will get the facts and return to that along with all the other million of ideas we've got for videos um, right Tiffany can you read on from where we left off if you can remember where we were I think it was I think sure. it was um I found it. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry. Mr. Armstrong identified five people he had dated in high school and said he fantasized about them. He acknowledged having sexual fantasies about a nine-year-old girl who's on TV and sings the national anthem wearing a short dress. He acknowledged yeah. watching Little House on the Prairie and masturbating to Mary. He did not indicate what age she was at the time. Right. We have to stop the. This will be our final topic of this stream. Um, the nine-year-old girl. Now, someone very kindly, well, those are very strange things to say about uh, such a video. Someone put the a link to the, the video involving the nine-year-old, I believe, in the last video that we did. And I watched it, and when I first put it on, I laughed my balls off because there's just this kid... Just this kid there, and it's it's like a bit of a cheesy video. And this kid has got like, I don't know how to explain it. I was kind of thought from what he was saying, they put this fucking nine-year-old in a bikini and sexualized her. <laughs> That's what I thought was going to happen. So when I saw it, and she was just this innocent, nice little girl, I was like, it just made me laugh. And I was like... It's such a bizarre thing because I'm thinking, and then I skip to the end of the video where she's walking off, and he, I believe he said he says in one of the calls that that was because she was in like a short skirt or something. So yet again, I was thinking, oh, they've sexualized this girl. They, why are they doing this? There was like it was a two second clip where she's just walking in a in a in a field with normal clothes on. I'm like, what Can you is going on? Thing? And drinking his coffee and he sees that and he spits it out when he sees it and he's all angry yeah that that happened i'm sure yeah yeah lauren likes to get up at 4 30 in the morning for a reason can i just say that of all three of all four of us all three of us of all four of us seen that video yeah 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 right. i don't think the girl in the end and the girl singing are the same person for some uh, reason but, oh, okay but, well it doesn't really also, matter She's not in a skirt, short skirt either. She's in leggings. No, it's yeah, not even... Actually. There's nothing sexualized about it at all. It's very odd. Yeah. So that means that Lauren thinks that any young girl walking around, no matter what she's wearing, even and if it's a dress or shorts, is sexualized. And you know what's funny about it? Lauren actually thought he was going to get brownie points for it. Mm -hmm. Because he reported... Yeah. He reported so, that this right. something should something should take place to make sure that that little girl. Yeah, so we have to just just for the benefit of anybody, unlikely as it is, that doesn't know what we're talking about. Lawn, is what it what it says in the. In fact, Tiffany, you've always got a more eloquent way with words than me. Do you want to just sum up what he said in the call as to explain away what? He actually meant. He, well, for a start, he actually says that strangely enough, these people who did the report have all got it wrong, and it's their fault. For a start, didn't it? Yeah, they're they're twisting his words. He was very upset when Blue Boy pointed out that everything that was positive in here was reported by him, and everything that she actually had to say, her opinion, was all negative. He was very upset. So they were twisting his words, but. In particular, about the nine-year-old, he was saying that he reported it because he didn't like that there are people out there who are going to sexualize her. There's other predators that are going to look at her and fantasize. Oh, my God. That's typical. You know, that's a typical long kind of excuse. He's making him the hero in that scenario and everybody else the mm -hmm. bad guy. So he's, he's, he's imagining people that don't exist as being the vi uh, being the villains in this scenario and he's somehow the hero that's just so typical of lawn isn't it yeah he's he's hypersensitive to anything that has to do don't with that and i think <laughs> right but i think he he does look at himself as being the good person here that he's reporting something that's a problem because he knows what he thinks 
when he looks at it. So he's imagining that everyone else who's also a predator, which is half the community as well, at least, Mm. uh, with all of the bowls of sugar and whatnot. But, you know, everyone else is going to be looking at her and fantasizing. So he he does think that that's a good thing because, once again, he's separating himself from everyone else. And he's saying, well, I know that this isn't right, and I don't want them to look at her in that way. So apparently, just like I said, every single girl who's walking around is sexualized by him. So therefore, they're, they're going to be sexualized by other predators, too. And he's not angry at, uh, at the uh, producer or whoever made that film. He's angry at himself for feeling sexually attracted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, he's. Do you think he is angry at himself though? Because wouldn't that mean that there's some form of self-judgment, which I'm not sure there is with him. No, I don't not, think that he's angry at himself. He, he doesn't think that way. No, I don't think so. That would be his intention. He he gives it away uh, unconsciously or subconsciously sometimes. But no, he was the one that was upset that it it. it it aroused him. That's why he was upset. And he's, he think about what he says about the people in his class, how angry he gets. And I'm sure for anybody to have to listen, not Lauren, but for any, anybody to listen to what they have to say would be infuriating for them to talk about what they've done, what they think about it, what they still struggle with. If they're being honest, because this yeah. stuff doesn't go away. And it, it's crazy that he, even with Casey, for him to admit that a couple of years ago, yeah, he was attracted to kids. Well, he did admit also that uh, if it was legal to date 17 year olds, he would. Well, he would yeah, have. Everyone would. Yeah. Who wouldn't? Yeah. yeah. And what, what was crazy? It, well, that's exactly right. Who wouldn't? Why wouldn't you? And and his even his wording was so disturbing, and that a seventeen year old kid. Yeah, he actually said. It sounded like he, he actually to... said it. And it's then not... he asked Casey, "Oh, you stop at eighteen now, right? What the fuck does that mean?" Uh, um, yes, Lauren. Even I mean, and as Casey said, even eighteen is far too young. Absolutely, yeah. I wouldn't date an eighteen year old. But he was so disbelieving. Oh, sure. I mean, I, I, I wish she had asked him to elaborate. And I understand in the moment there's so much to say. But, it, you know, so many things you want to say to him and so many questions you want to ask. But I wish she had asked him, what do you mean? Like I stop at 18 now. Do you think that I have sex with kids, Lauren? Is that what you're getting at? In case yeah, or the, stops at 30, so. or the only thing that stops me is the is the legal aspect of it. Right. Uh-huh. That was my point. Uh, you know, and if it was 16, you'd do the same thing. And the way he described it, like you said, it was so creepy. It was like, wouldn't you? Like, oh, look at him. Come on. Wouldn't you? But we can't touch him yet. Like waiting for Rhoda to turn 18. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he said there's. You know, there there's always something that, you know, I might find attractive about a minor, but it doesn't mean it'll be a little kid. It might be it might be someone who's 17 and almost an adult like I think, that. I think it all comes down to Lorne. The more you think about it, Lorne's one of the most dangerous ones out there. He is on one level because if he's so unaware of his own or doesn't care, he's got so, the lack of self-awareness is really dangerous because it because there's no restraint. There's no ability. He needs yeah, he needs, yeah, he needs everything that that's he needs, available. He needs these along his life, he needs them constantly. If he was you like know? a good-looking guy with a bit of money, fuck me, that guy would be like. It's, it's the thing that saves us from our people from him is he's so dumb and sort of unappealing that he'll, you know, it struggle. You know, there's not that many people. That could be harmed, but plus it, there's all the conditions he's got to live under as well. So, like Tiffany was saying earlier, the the, the register it, it was designed for people like him. 
you know that's what it was made for you know he's the per- he, he, which is ironic because he he believes he doesn't belong on there <laughs> well if he doesn't who the fuck does yeah yeah, he definitely belongs on there. It is good that he's going to be on there forever. I'm so glad that that's a pain in his ass. Yes. And, you know, I, when I heard about how far he has to drive to go to class. I didn't know that. How far drive. is it? Yeah. He wants to go to Waterville, which is a half hour. But he has to go to Bangor now because they changed providers. And I already did the book. You know, well, it's a big place, hours. isn't it? I was a bit when we were that we. How long did it take us to get from Kane into well, the court? We it was yeah, a good got, hour and fifteen, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it so it makes me think that you know again we're off topic, but it makes me think that uh, if Lorne ever loses his car, he's going to have to get on a bus and do this every week. Is, is he doing his treatment in person though? Because yeah. he's not in the class anymore. No, he's got individual treatment now. Right. So is that in person? From what I understand, yeah. He was he was he was complaining about the provider and how far he has to go now. Oh, I thought he was happy about it. I, you know, it's funny because when you were saying that, that's the exact same stuff that he was saying before when he had to change from the original class with Gene over to I forget what his name is, but he was saying and. We were trying to talk to him about that and figure out why. Why is it, Lauren, that you were kicked out of that class and now you have to go to this one? And he just says, well, they changed providers. Yeah. As if that's the, if that, I'm sure that that could happen. However, with Lauren, there's so much more that goes into that. So much. And, you know, his idea that, you know, the reason why he was just on the verge of passing class and he had just, colored inside the lines in his coloring book and suddenly they change providers and he has to start all over again. Like that would be legal. Like that would be acceptable. Like no lawyer would take him up on that. Right. And I I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting that he still complains about the book. The book wasn't filled out correctly. Yeah. You read those assignments and you really understand why he's still in treatment. Yeah. Which we're going to do. Right. Amanda James. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> he thinks he, he thinks it's a participation trope. That's all it is. Yeah, like oh, I'm done. You yeah. know, it's like if you were to take a math exam, hand it in, and you you did write something <laughs> in for each answer. <laughs> yeah, and they were like, no, you're not going to pass this, and you're like, well, wait a second, I finished it. <laughs> That's exactly what he thinks. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um... Yeah, so the the nine year old thing is probably I think it's maybe the thing that stood out the most from the report for obvious reasons, and um, the fact that he kind of um, you know this is something he told them, so it was on his mind. He made this crazy excuse that he's protecting people, and, and we're able to. I think we can categorically say that you know I don't think there's any doubt that. Because you don't, even Lorne, I always think it's important not to paint him in a light which isn't accurate. You know, like the racism thing and all that, like when that initially started, I didn't like that. But I think from the information that we've got here, I think we can safely say that there was some kind of attraction to this kid, can't we? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, according doubt. to him, he failed the test and then the polygrapher said, so is anything bothering you? Which anyone would take to mean, you know, what'd you do? You failed the test. Why'd you fail it? What's going on? And he, at that point, according to him, randomly decided to bring up the fact, yeah, something's been bothering me. There's this little girl on the news every morning (laughs) and she's in a real short skirt and that bothers me. And so, of course, the polygrapher is like, okay, it bothers you because you're looking at her in a sexual way. That's why you failed the test. That makes sense. Admit and Lauren accused him of right? twisting his words. Oh, Why wow. would you bring that up? Wow. <laughs> I find that funny when he was he had so much bravado in front of Casey saying he's going to slap that report right on the stenographer's desk or right on the, the probation officer's desk and get this mm-hmm. shit, shit ain't right. Shit ain't right. Can you imagine that conversation? I guarantee he backed down. He probably, you know, disagreed, but... <laughs> You know, and I can't remember what he said. He said when he came back, I think he told Bill Blue Boy, uh, well, we were both right. And I don't know what he meant by that. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> we're both you guys right. You, know? you, know, saying, you guys say I'm a friend of pop. I didn't say this. You twisted my stuff. And I guarantee they have all this stuff on recordings anyway. The polygraph, you know, or whatever sessions he had, especially for this report. Yeah. Imagine his lawyer getting it, you know, because he, this all started when he wanted to review his case and his lawyer actually had this done. Uh, that's why he had to pay for it, I think. Um, but the lawyer gets it first. The lawyer gets it first. And he reads it. Oh fuck! I got to give this to this guy. See what Cubfish is. <laughs> Cubfish is just pulled that. And lawyer probably... pulls off their hat. And the lawyer's like, "Okay, you're fine with it." Okay. That's probably not the best topic for an RSO to bring up during a polygraph. <laughs> it's yeah. Very succinct. Um, yeah, absolutely. But he's just yeah. trying to point out how he's not a pedophile. See. I'm not a pedophile. I'm looking out for her own best interest because I know there's a bunch of pigs out there jerking off to her. Not me, though. Yeah, he's a good guy. <laughs> not me, Mr. American Sex Offender on the register got caught on to catch a predator. <laughs> exactly. Not me. <laughs> but it took the catfish to get him to comprehend that report. His lawyer just didn't even bother with it. Once he, you know, he realized his client is so fucking deluded. <laughs> If he's happy with the report, I'm I'm happy. That's fine. I'll just let it be. It is what it is, you know. And he had to do it the most public way to find out how stupid he is. Yeah, that's wow. great. Right, we're gonna have to wrap it up. It's getting a bit late here. Um, so we've got through page two, guys. Are we are we happy with ourselves? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. We're pleased. Good. Well. Um... Thank you to everybody in the chat. There's been a lot of people in today, of course, and um, how could there not be with the subject matter? And it's, it's, I think it's been some very interesting uh, topics and yet more um, further future topics of conversations, like we can do a Quantum Leap episode, we can talk about fucking... I think you and I, Andrew, should go up there as a gay couple and see if we can spend a few nights. I, do you know what? That's... <laughs> yeah, why not? I mean, you would love your accent. Yeah, I, I'm I'm comfortable with my sexuality, so we'll we'll do that, dude. Why not? Why not? Let's see. But don't forget about his homophobia, though. Like you know, we, yeah, we do. We do. I mean, it'd be interesting you to hear have to wear those reacts. matching outfits like you did. <laughs> yeah. that, um, the That's the point. We could go <laughs> wearing his vest exactly how he dresses in the law reality show, upper body exercise show. Right, we'll ask to go out in the backyard and he'll give us a training session. Exactly. <laughs> if we just turned up as like um, fans of the Law Reality Show and hope he doesn't recognise us from court, he'd probably buy it. <laughs> he wouldn't recognise you guys. Because he didn't recognise socks from court, did he, the fucking yeah. moron? So, um, yeah. They just want him to love me. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm choking on my own rage here. Right, okay. Uh, thank you uh, to Tiffany, Amanda James, and Shin, and especially Amanda James for braving through the, hopefully, the outer reaches of COVID-19. So, hope you, you get better soon. Get better, man. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, so, thanks, everybody. I'm not sure what we'll be doing next weekend because um, the the soccer World Cup's going on and England is still in it at the minute so we'll see what's going on with that but no doubt we'll be back at some point soon so thanks everybody leave any comments that you think are interesting um